it's one thing to talk about React, but then it's another to actually put your hands on the keyboard and make sure that you're understanding what you're learning. And so the quicker that you can put your hands on the keyboard, the better. That's why we've been having you pause the video and do some quick little exercises and tips so that you can try to build those skills. So the rest of the skills that we're gonna talk about events, Google authentication with Firebase user specific data, as well as all the other topics that we've talked, we're gonna to touch them again in our first React app. When you have the link, it will take you to the repo copier, which will give you access to be able to copy over the repo to your GitHub account. And once you have it copied over, it'll look like this. So it has the name, random useless facts. It looks like we're going to be using an API. Love it. And then it also gives us the endpoint and response. We're gonna test that in Postman. And then the acceptance criteria. So the acceptance criteria is what we expect the user to be able to do or the application to be able to do when we're done with it, which is a form of MVP. And then the instructions on how to pull down the repo and getting started. Make sure you go ahead and pause this video and then go ahead and finish all of these steps. And I'll see you on the other side. Now, if you finished all the steps, you have a page that looks like this. And when you click sign in, you can sign in to your application. Can we just get a, a hand? Okay, so that means that you've completed everything that was supposed to be done. You set up your Firebase, you set up authentication in your Firebase, and you also went through and set up the real-time database. So we've got everything set up. Now what we wanna do is let's go over here and let's actually test the API. So I actually was playing with it earlier. So this is the URL that was inside of our documentation in our README. So if we look at our README, it has useless facts and it says this is the endpoint. So this is the endpoint here. And I got a joke back. It says the 57 on Heinz ketchup bottles represents the number of varieties of pickles the company once had. Oh, nice. So let me click again. And then it gives me another one. Okay. So we know that this endpoint is working. We've tested it in Postman and we know what we know. All right. Okay, now let's go to the app and let's take a look at our page.js. Our layout.js has everything already in it. Um, we don't really need to touch this. The only other thing that we might want to touch is the title. This title is what we see on this browser tab. Okay, so you might want to put something different there. I'm going to put Dr. T's first React app and then save it. And now when I come here, you see it says Dr. T's first React app. So that's gonna make it a little bit better. And then there's also something over here that says change me. I'm going to assume that that is in the nav bar. And you see it says change me here. And I'm gonna say first React app and save. And now it says first React app. Okay. Now let's go to the main page in the application, which is here. Let's gut it, okay? We're going to gut it because we are going to do something completely different in here. Okay. So we're going to remove everything out of here. We're actually going to keep the use off. Okay. Now this comment here says any component that uses use auth needs this, which is the client use client um, because of the component directly imports use auth. It just needs to be a client component. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to create a function called fetch fact, and I'm going to make it an asynchronous function. Basically, that means that it's a promise. If I can spell, that means that it's a promise. It's gonna return a promise. So I'm gonna say const response equals await fetch. And I need to pass it the string of the URL here. I'm gonna copy that and paste it in here. Then I'm going to do const fact equals await response dot JSON. And this is going to convert the response to JSON for us. And then let's console log uh, fact. So let's call it. fact and let's see what we get so looky here we got us some facts so it's great that we are console logging the fact and we're able to get it through but is that what we want like that's not the ultimately what we want so what we want is the user to be able to interact with the fact and be able to say whether or not they knew that fact or not 
But then also when they say whether or not they knew the fact, we get a new fact, right? So that means that we need something that's keeping track of not only the fact, but then also when to change the fact and all those different things, right? We're gonna use state and we're gonna create a state element. And we are going to name it useless fact, okay? And then we are going to do set useless fact equals use state. I'm gonna import that in. And we know that we're getting an object back from the API. So we're gonna set that default to an object. Now, this is important because these are going to maintain whatever the value we get back from the API is. So if that changes, then the component is going to re-render, okay? That's why we wanna use state. So useless fact is a variable, right? It's a variable name. We're setting the value of that and the way that that value gets set is on load of the component, whatever this default value is, that's the first value that it has. Now, what we want to do is, is when the component loads, we want this fetch to run, it's gonna go out, get a response, and then we're going to do something with this response, which is let's set the value of the useless fact to the fact that we get back. So instead of console logging here, I'm going to set useless fact. Yes, okay. And now we can test this by coming down here and doing fact dot text and let's see if we get anything back besides an error yes we don't oh because it needs to be useless fact get more specific Teresa okay so we're over here and look we oh goodness it's just going it's just going it's just going okay well let's stop that from happening is because we don't want this thing to be constantly in control, right? So whenever this thing changes, the, the component's gonna keep going. So we can't just call the function like that, okay? It's just gonna keep on grabbing and grabbing and grabbing. We can't do that, okay? So what we need to do instead is we need to do a use effect, okay? And a use effect accepts two arguments. It accepts anonymous function and an array which we call the dependency array. And we saw that that thing was just looping, looping, looping. Well, the dependency array stops that from happening because if anything is in here, it will watch to see if that thing changes before it re-renders the component, which is so much better than watching it loop, loop, loop. So in here, we are going to do fetch fact. And we want that to happen on render. So let's actually use effect we have to import that in as well. So we have to use effect to get it imported. I'm gonna save and let's see what happens now. Now we get one useless fact, okay? So this is this is doing uh, an effect, right? So it's handling just anything that needs to happen on component load. We want to put it in the use effect so that then everything can change. It'll change from this object to the new one and it won't be spinning like we just saw, okay? So that's the value of use, to, use effect. So this is kind of working the way that we want. The only difference is, is that we don't have the ability to say whether we knew this fact or not and for it to go to the next fact, okay? So let's work on that, okay? So let's come down in, into the component and let's put some buttons in here. Let's see what we're working with right here. Boom, did you notice fact? All right, now we have bootstrap in here, so I am going to do class name equals btn, btn dot dash success. Now, here's what's important here. Whenever you're doing classes in React, we can't just do class equals. It has to be class name equals, okay? Um, type equals button, okay? That get rid gets rid of that error. I am going to copy this onto this other button. And for no, I'm going to say, is it warning? No, danger. Danger is red. No. So if we save that and we come here, now we have a yes and a no. Clap, 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 clap. Let's make the fact a little bit bigger too. Let's make it a H2. All right. So now we've got this right here. Do we know this fact? Yes or no? All right. So what I want us to do is we need to create a function that whenever we click yes, it creates an object and we want that object to contain a couple things from this. So um, 
the let's go back to the readme the readme says that in the data each user's interaction with the fact is saved to firebase with the following structure user id fact id and then the response whether it was true or false okay so we need to modify our component to deal with that so let's do const select response equals and we're going to pass it value Okay, so what we have is a function called select response, and we are passing it a value. It's either going to be true or false. So let me actually put Boolean so that we know. Um, and then we are creating an object that is going to create the object that we want, which is based off of the readme that we have here. We want the user ID, the fact ID, and their response. And then we're going to console log the value, which will be true or false, as well as the object. We need to add click events on these buttons. So we're gonna say on click, and we're gonna pass it an anonymous function because we have to pass it an, uh, an argument whenever we are calling it. So we're gonna say select response, and then we're gonna say true, okay, for yes. And then over here, we're gonna say false. Okay. So let's refresh. And it says, WW2 Warrior Fighters. Oh, this is a big one. Did you know this fact? No. So I come over here and I say, okay, it's false. And then you see we get the permalink, we get the response is false, and then we get the user ID on it. So let's say yes. And then we see this happen again, right? But the thing about it is, is that the fact is not changing. And every time they select a yes or no, we want the fact to change too. So let's go back to our code. And inside of our select response, Let's call fetch fact so that after it creates the object, it'll fetch the fact as well when we click. All right. So no. And now look, I got me a new fact. Yes, I knew that one. No. Yes. Oh, look at us. We are doing it. All right. So what we are going to have to do now is, is we just need to return OBJ for now. Okay, we're actually gonna do some other things with this select response by hooking up our Firebase, but we've got to get all that stuff set up first. Okay, so we see that these things are working and it is amazing that everything is working the way that we need it to. So let's create a, another response that actually allows us to save the values to Firebase.